Hey guys, how's it going? Mike? What is up everybody? This is Sage from the future from fall 2022. And I just want to give you guys a quick TLDR of what this video is all about because I don't really clearly state my point because I, I just keep getting distracted by different uh, thoughts in my mind and I just don't really punch it in. So I'm just going to do it before we begin the beginner video so you guys, you know, understand what I'm on about here. It's basically I address how uh, suddenly all, you know, because of how so many people are going into mycology nowadays and, and how mainstream uh, mycology is bringing in so many people is that, you know, they're all going crazy about crosses, all going crazy about pubensis. Uh, but, uh, but now it seems like people are finally starting to realize that there's different species out there, right? And basically in this video, and, and the thing is, because these people don't sort of have a shallow background, they think that this is like a new thing, like as if we just discovered, oh, we have different species, oh, look, <laughs> pool lovers are more strong than core lovers, oh my goodness, wow. You know, I just want to say, Gordo Tech did not discover pa uh, pool lovers, all right? Nothing against him. He, I'm not talking about it. I'm just talking about it in general. This is sort of the trend that of, of, the, of the type of understanding, misunderstanding that I see people have. So that's what I wanted to address in this video. All right, back to the video. File Sage checking in here. And I just wanted to make a video about, uh, it's not so much cultivation related. It's, it is mushroom related though. It's basically about what I foresee as, the, as one of the new up and coming trends uh, in mycology. I just want to call it. And that is uh, different species, right? And don't get me wrong, different species have been around for a long, long time, you know? For example, in Holland, you know, 20 plus years ago when you could get mushrooms there, legally, you could get uh, Pinellas cyanus at the store, you could buy, of course, pubensis, all sorts of pubes. And you could also buy, uh, like, any species of truffle you want. Uh, you could buy Floridian and Mexican grass lover roots, you know, even and uh, you could even buy horse poo lovers at a shop, which is amazing. And of course, now you can't do that. But this idea of different species uh, providing, you know, sort of different trips in a sense is, is, is very, very old. Right. Um, and why do I say that? Well, because I believe that because of how mushrooms have become completely mainstream, whereas before, let's say, you know, 20 years ago, it was kind of more niche uh, and there was more of a stigma associated to it wrongly about mushroom users and stuff. Now that's changing, right? So so what's going to happen is people are going to suddenly, uh, well, there's this whole new generation of cultivators, basically, because it's gone mainstream, right? Cultivation. So all these guys they're, and gals, they're, what they're doing is they're uh, growing out pubes and then they're going to move on to wiener envy, you know, and, and still at this point, they're still not really knowledgeable that there's uh, really privy to the fact that there's all sorts of different species for them to play around with, right? And... Uh, because everybody's just so focused on pubes. Now, why is everybody so focused on them? It's because they're the easiest to grow uh, and perhaps the easiest mushroom species in general to grow, period. You know, if you include uh, medical species and gourmet, you know, species, they are super, super easy. Um, so, so that's one reason, right? Um, and because it's so main, it's like, it is like the main cultivated mushroom, right? So that means that there's a huge community surrounding Cubensis, you know? Um, oh, I smell dung. I know there's horses around here. <laughs> oh man, I once found a- Horse poo lovers. Like straight from horse dung. And boy, oh, it's a, I feel it in my throat. It's like really, really fresh dung. Not good for growing. Edible mushrooms. Anyways, uh, back on point. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so, so pubes, right? So it's easy. There's a huge community surrounding it. And you know, the interesting thing about them is even very experienced, uh, very accomplished growers, right? Like uh, trusted cultivators on the shroomery, for example, they they primarily grow pubes. Not all of them. There's, of course, uh, great trusted cultivators that grow all sorts of different species. One in particular that I'm thinking about is uh, Captain Future. He is crazy. He's fruited like Liberty Caps. Uh, indoors, which is freaking insane. He's he's grown like he's grown like twenty plus, you know, like rare ass species of of, of psilocybes, uh, and not only psilocybes, you know, uh, like other species. I can't list them off the top of my head, um, but anyways, but 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 the vast majority of growers stick with pubes, you know. And I've always always wondered why, you know. You you I mean, you could if you want to 
grow like you know more far more potent species if you wanted to and and there's various reasons i find for why that is uh one one idea that i find uh they have or one of their one of the common justifications i hear is that there's no difference it's just psilocybin is psilocybin is psilocybin right and i agree yeah psilocybin is psilocybin is psilocybin it's all just psilocybin at the end of the day but we're not having when we eat mushrooms we're not eating just pure psilocybin are we one is eating all sorts of different chemicals that are in the mushrooms right and i and and you know before this was sort of like uh well because psilocybin gets all the limelight you know people forget about this or you know just think oh you know all those things though all the other stuff in the mushrooms they're inert well as I've been saying forever, you know, it's not true. And I've been proven right recently with with um, all these studies coming out saying, oh yeah, there's harmalas, which are basically MAOIs in mushroom body, in, in fruiting bodies and more in mycelium, right? Uh, just to name one, you know, species have serotonin. Now serotonin, yeah, okay, people say it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier. And that that that's what it seems to be the case in lab studies. But at the same token, you, do you guys know what GABA is? Well, you know, GABA receptors, right? It's like every single cell in our body has GABA receptors and GABA, GABA is very, very important. You know, it's what relaxes us. You know, it's, it's what ma maintains our glutamate levels. It levels it out. Uh, so, uh, you know, alcohol and benzodiazepines, you know, all, all these most uh, sedatives and depressants, uh, the type that kind of gets you high, work on the GABA receptor and of course GABA withdrawal is hell on earth it's probably the worst withdrawal that you could have because it could kill you um, but uh, speaking of GABA um, uh, well you know you could buy straight up GABA as a supplement legally right and uh, what, what what the label says is that it relaxes you right now of course the science though says that pure GABA does not cross the blood brain uh, blood brain barrier, right? The BBB. So, so it shouldn't have any effects. Yet it does, right? Like people have literally had withdrawals from these GABA supplements that you could just buy in a pharmacy. Um, and of course, I'm sure body chemistry plays a role too. Some people might not be affected, but there are certainly some people, anecdotally at least, that are affected by it to the point of getting withdrawals after they quit or if they had uh like some kindling effect which is basically uh with with alcohol withdrawal or, or basically gaba related um withdrawal if you had such a withdrawal then the next time you take it take that same drug uh it's going to be a lot easier for you to precipitate withdrawals and it's going to be far worse because you're going to be starting where you left off it's just it just gets worse and worse and worse and in the case of for example alcohol you know like deep alcoholics they keep drinking anyways and that's what ultimately kills them, the withdrawal. They get, they get a grand mal seizure and they die most of the time. Uh, so, uh, you know, like, so going back to serotonin, right? Now we say that it doesn't affect, uh, it, it doesn't affect consciousness at least. You know, maybe it affects the stomach. Maybe it affects nausea because serotonin also uh, controls a lot of the stomach movement. Um, and that's why you get a lot of nausea from psychedelics like LSD or mushrooms, you know? People say that it's it's the chitin. The mushroom uh, like cell walls are too hard. I think that's, I mean, unless you're really, 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 really prone to indigestion already, that shouldn't have an effect on you, right? Uh, for example, I get crazy nausea on LSD and I just eat a tab, you know? It's, it's not that physical act of digesting. It's the fact that they're both serotogenic, you know, their activity. So it stimulates, it pretends to be serotonin. And that, that, that basically gives me the nausea, right? Um, so, so for example, yeah, so serotonin, right? Okay, so maybe serotonin, just straight up serotonin doesn't cross the blood brain, uh, brain barrier. But who knows, really? It's not like there's been all that much research into it. Or at the very least, there's no research and how pure serotonin interacts with all the other stuff in a mushroom, right? With, for example, the MAOI, the harmalas in the mushroom, for example. There's just so much that we don't understand. Um, you know, there's like tryptamine and stuff because these are precursors to create uh, psilocybin and, you know, all, all its related analogs. And, and you know, recently norcilocin has just been discovered, right? 
Um, so there's all sorts of stuff that re is being discovered. So essentially what I want to say is that all mushroom species, you know, are different. Wow, look at those clouds, guys. Holy crap. Heavenly. Um, so so uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So, so you know, I, in a previous video, I talked about strains, right? Uh, about like pubensis strains. and that is a lot more murky that's a lot more difficult to say oh there if there are any differences but for species it is a hundred percent fact that there is there are differences there are differences um absolutely and i'm gonna go i'm gonna make another video talking about i, I i've tried like five or six species uh i've been blessed enough to try a couple so uh, I'll make a video on each of them, or maybe make one video talking about each one, and I'll tell you which ones are my favorite. Spoiler alert, my favorites are Liberty Caps. My favorites are Liberty Caps. They're my absolute favorite. Um, well, that, that's a pretty big spoiler, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, so, so why do I want to call, call out that the next trend is going to be um, new species, right? Well, because... Um, I think that with this new generation of growers, you know, uh, I it's for historic history's sake. You know, I, I'm interested in preserving the history of how we came to this point. And that, that's one of my main interests in this channel. I mean, not only for mushrooms, but a lot of things. And I just want to make sure that this info is out there, that it's not something new. It's not something that's just been discovered, that there's a bunch of different species, you know, because that's, that's, that's how it's going to be like for a lot of, in a lot of places. Uh, a lot of uh, platforms, right? And forums. Uh, not the shroomery, but you know. Um, so so I just wanna set the narrative straight in my own little way by posting a video about it. Hey guys, unfortunately my phone ran out of, uh, of storage space when I was filming it, unfortunately. I was able to recover a lot of the footage though. So uh, I talked for like a couple more seconds about something. Um, I'm, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to fill in the blanks. Um, basically, I believe what I said was about how uh, content creators, you know, it's interesting how like there's there's all these channels on YouTube about, you know, I like to call it the mycoactive community, right? You know what I mean, right? Uh, like magic mycology. And uh, there's this trend. Well, it's not a trend. It's just like people don't don't uh, talk about any other species in cubes, you know? And I, I'm just left wondering why, you know, there's so many other species to explore. A lot of them aren't even as hard. I mean, a lot of them aren't that much dif different from pubes. Um, so like, for example, truffles, right? You don't even need to fruit them. You just need to leave them in a jar for a couple of months and there you go. So that's one thing. And uh, another thing is, uh, well, I mean, how many more spawn to bulk videos do you need? I mean... You know, like how many more bucket tech videos do you need? Uh, I know a lot of you guys are asking me for, for videos like that, and I will make videos detailing my whole process. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just, there's just a big uh, def uh, deficiency on YouTube on different species. And so that's what I'd like to uh, contribute a little more. And, you know, nowadays, the interesting thing is... Uh, like so many species that before were extremely rare and hard to get a hold of and just wild, like like not domesticated, basically, are getting domesticated. Like, for example, uh, Psilocybe as decorum is getting uh, domesticated now in this rumory. You know, there's a huge thread. There's also uh, Psilocybe semper viva, you know, which before, a couple of months ago, uh, used to take a long, long time to even start pinning, but now, you know, it's it's getting to the point where it's sort of like pubes, and you could grow him on core. But anyways, I'll, 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 I think I've talked enough for this video, guys. So, anyways, have a good one, guys. My 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 voice is a little hoarse <laughs> today, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoy the footage, and. Uh, yeah, so, so this is going to be a new series, guys. It's going to be called Species Talk, and this is part one of it. I'm going to be going over a lot of stuff, uh, commentary about what's a, what, what I think about different species and everything related to it, you know? Um, so yeah, guys, look forward to it. Have a good one. Bye-bye.